Hey, I'm Chris, and we're gonna take a look at one of my favorite cameras in the whole world. It's an Aeroflex SR3 Advanced, and this camera is one of the ones I started my career on. Dating myself, I'm a, not a millennial, I'm an old Gen Xer, and when I started, we had film all the time. That was kind of the main thing I worked with. And this camera, while it is a throwback, it is still one of the best cameras. Back in the day, I used to say that, you know, any video camera that you work with, it's gonna be, be in a doorstop in three years. But working with an Area SR, you can take a camera from the 1970s and it's gonna work just as well in the 2000s. And now it's the 2020, and guess what? It still works just as well as it did in the 1970s, but even better because the film stocks are still here, still working, still making some amazing, amazing images. So we're gonna just take a look at this package. The case was, was it was really well done. It was done by a company called a j Cases. It's been around for a while. Um, if you're looking down from the top, I had it done with a couple little extra areas to put stuff. So put accessories in here, like the BP base plate. This is the 15 millimeter rod adapters. And down in here, which I guess maybe the GoPro it sees, is where the batteries stay. Um, it's pretty tight, so you had, we had to use little pieces of fabric to hold the batteries in place. There's one of the batteries, the other ones I have on charge on the side. And I'm just gonna pull some of these pieces out. We're gonna put the camera together, take a look at it on a tripod, and to talk about its capabilities. You know, one of the advantages of working with film is of course the look you get, but the longevity of the image. You know, you can take a film that you shot 20 years ago if you have the original negative, and you can retransfer it to 4K or 6K or 8K, whatever the future holds. Plus you're gonna have a fantastic look of film. I'm gonna pull up, here's the body. So this is a Airy SR3 high-speed advance. So this is a, one of the last SRs that was made before they switched to the 416 camera. This one has a built-in integrated video tap, full color video four. It's NTSC, um, so we've put a little modification on here. You have the back plate, which runs off 24 volts, and then the top is a 12 volt uh, Anton Bauer, which will run a monitor and wireless video, any of the accessories that you use that use the standard kind of plugs we're using nowadays. So it's kind of a modification we did. This is where the, the standard 15 millimeter rod format that we use in 2020 and uh, recently came from. It was the mini rods for the Area SR that kind of started this whole standard 15 millimeter distances. And these things are actually pretty hard to come by in 2020. If you need to find a replacement, probably have to machine it or find one of the few one, original ones that are around. One of the amazing things about this camera and working with film in general is that you work and look from your optical viewfinder. And I used to love working with optical viewfinders. It, it felt like you're looking into a whole different world when you look through that, like you're part of the situation. Working with this Area SR, you get to have that. And I think it's an experience that as a filmmaker, everyone should have at least once or twice. So here's an extension eyepiece. This optically allows you to put the viewfinder back. So I'm just gonna put this bridge plate on, which will allow the camera to mount to the sliding base plate. Pretty traditional for standard uh, production. Use that. Of course, if you're gonna go handheld, you put this on and then you can put your hand grips on the side. If you see right here, you can get a close up. This is original Airy Rosette. We of course use these now on most modern digital cameras. We have tons of them. But this is kind of the original handheld design back in the day. This setup was used for Geez, I mean, it was the 70s up until the 2000s. These are newly manufactured batteries by Lens Equipment up in Canada, which is one of the last companies that still supports uh, the Super 16 package. And they're really, really good, high capacity, 24 volt batteries. And um, they're really good find that we can still get these new because batteries are the one component that doesn't last. Film cameras, because of the precision, they will last for a very, very long time. Uh, but batteries, of course, they tend to die after a minute, so it's great that Lens makes these. Here's your Airy SR mag, and we're gonna do a quick loading of it with a dummy load. Usually you do this in the dark, but it's got a nice clear line. 
you can practice with in the light, which is what we're gonna show you right now. This is a very short dummy load, probably 20 feet, <laughs> I guess, but it's enough to practice with. So in the dark, what I do is I would grab this. I wanna feel to feel the edge of the sprocket right there, because you're gonna to have to feed it in to the gearing and make sure the sprocket hits that gearing. So I'm gonna put the film down. I usually don't attach it at first until I get it in here. And then you can see I'm winding it with this gear right here. And once it catches, it's gonna be on there. And then I'll, I'll drop the film onto the, onto the film core. Then it's gonna come out. And at this point, when it comes out here, you can close this up. You, uh, this is your film counter. You wanna pop that down, close it up. And the rest you can do in the light, luckily. So now the rest of this just gets done and you can see it all. So you're gonna grab this in the light. This film is now exposed. And then you pull it down here and there's a little white line right here. You're gonna pull it up to that white line and that gives you the proper film loop. When I'm doing this, I get to the white line and then my finger on my left side, actually my thumb, is holding onto the gear. I'm gonna hold onto that gear so it doesn't change the film length. And I'm gonna feed it back through on this side until I feel it engage with the gear. And then I'm gonna now turn the film. So now it's on the take-up side. So I'm gonna go over the take-up side not the film side, the spool side. And then you're gonna grab this, pull it through, and you're gonna lock your film into this collapsible core, it's called. You're gonna close your film counter on this side. Usually I just wind this once, close it, so I don't keep a lot of film. Make sure the magazine's tight. Now the next thing you do is you wanna put the film inside the pressure plate. And there's two tiny little uh, pieces of metal you go under on each side. And now your film is ready to expose. You want to have it kind of in the middle so there's room on the top and bottom. If the loop is too big, it would come up and hit the top or hit the bottom here. So you can see this is a good size loop. It's ready to go on the camera. And then pull the back port cap off. When you load these mags, it's pretty simple. You just lift it up. So you come on an angle to put it in. Come up to the top, and then you can see at the top it's got like a, an orange marking. If you see that orange marking when you load it, it means it hasn't been loaded properly, you gotta pop it off again. Then there's a little safety latch here, locks the film in place. Once I have all that done, I'm gonna throw the battery on. This battery is kind of big, and it magnetically stays attached to the back of the mag. So if there's no mag on the camera, the battery doesn't always uh, stay in place. So I usually put it on afterwards. So flip that on and we'll flop over here. And you can see uh, the controls here on the side. I've got a nice zoom lens here that I love very much. I'm a big fan of Anjuni zooms. And uh, this is a Super 16 HR Anjuni zoom built in the, I think the, late 80s or early 90s. I think it's actually built in the early 90s, but I can't guarantee that, I have to research it. But it's a relatively fast lens at T2.4. It's got a great range, super wide at seven mil and goes to 81. And optically a very, very, very good lens for zooms. And to have that big range like that, seven to 81, is uh, was very much, uh, a sought after lens back in the day because it's light enough to be handheld and run around and it's wide enough to have a very wide angle lens. And 81, you're close, uh, it's like almost having a 200 mil on 35 mil millimeter film, so, or 35 millimeter digital sensor. So you get a pretty nice wide range. One of the things you wanna know um, with film cameras is, is you wanna see the, make sure that the, the gate is not in the way and the gate's clean. Um, you can spin the mirror. I don't know, can you see the mirror there when I'm spinning it? So I'm manually spinning the mirror. Um, and you don't want anything protruding from the back of the PL mount that might hit the, the mirror on the camera. 
mounts just like any other lens. There's a certain je ne sais quoi to working with film that hasn't gone away for me. I still love it after 20 years, so it just makes me so happy when I get to play with film cameras. Off camera, I've done a bunch of little playing around and setting up the camera. I'm just gonna show you what I've done. Right now, we added the battery um, so we can power off a analog to SDI converter. This is an important step. Right now, we have a TV logic monitor on there. Um, video tap is set up to show uh, your image coming out. On your image, right now, it's just showing your, your, your full frame, 16 by nine, everything that's being recorded on the camera. You can um, digitally add in some adjustable screen markers if you want to, to give you some uh, different visual references to look at when you're operating. Overall, this is kind of like a very basic setup for the Arri SR. It allows you to go shoot some film working with this great zoom lens, um, but you can use any PL mount lens with this camera as long as the back does not come and hit the film plane. So that is one of the important things to think about is that some modern digital cinema lenses will not work with a film camera because the back part of the lens kind of sticks out beyond the PL mount and can come and interface with the moving parts. So I'm just gonna run the camera once so you can hear it when it's running. Um, it doesn't make a lot of noise. So I'm gonna be quiet and you can just hear it. So it's running at 24 frames. This camera can run up to 150 frames a second. I'm gonna let it go all the way through. You can, you can hear the film roll out in a second. That was the rollout shut off. <laughs> So we got about a minute of film out of there. Um, of course, it was dummy film, so we didn't actually shoot anything. It's already been exposed a thousand times. But it, it's a lot of fun to play with. If you're in Los Angeles, feel free to hit us up on the phone. Um, if you want to rent the cameras, of course, they're available for that. If you just want to know more about it, I love talking about them. Hit me up however you want to do it across all the social medias. All right? Uh, I hope you enjoyed this super introduction to an Arri SR3 Advanced High Speed Camera.